and welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva, where I'm very pleased to be joined by Russ Shields, the chairman of the Collaboration on Intelligent Transport System Communication Standards. Russ, thanks for joining us. Thank you. I'm very, it's very nice to be here in Geneva again. Russ, you have a wealth of experience in intelligent transport. Where do we stand today? We're slowly moving towards automated driving. The first cars with automated driving um, been released in Japan last year, Honda, um, the high-end cars, in the Tokyo area, only in expressways, and only up until about 50 kilometers an hour. And Mercedes, in its high-end S-Class, has started in Europe. Germany is already out. Um, it will go up to 60 kilometers an hour. Um, and we can have, uh, in U.S., it's going to be there relatively soon on Mercedes. So these things are coming. That's where our state of the art is. It's limited. Another 10 years, it's going to be wholly different. We will, we will actually be able to probably have automated driving. Um, it's not there now on these things. That's what we big talk about. Safety has gotten better but it's not perfect, uh, and this is an area where ITU has been very important in working on the safety things as these steps have come, and vehicle manufacturers and vehicle suppliers, a number of them have become ITU sector members, so it's been a big step. Firstly, in the areas uh, where you're interested, what are the key uh, priorities for industry and government? Well, the key parts are built around putting together the regulations. Um, we have an organization called the World Forum for Harmonization of Vehicle Regulations, uh, the UN agency, which is working hard on the automated driving regulations. Um, we have also the, the Global Forum for Road Safety, which is working on upgrading the um, driving regulations um, to uh, be able to support the automated driving. And it's those kind of things that are key, and in that is the evolving of communications. And we would hope, uh, if we go and look 10 years from now, for example, we will be able to have, say, bicycles be able to send message to the automated car, uh, I'm here, be careful, um, please don't hit me, type things. And they, those things will start to happen. But it is, it's that evolution, step by step. And ITU's role over the years, and ITU's role today, is uh, in partnership with the UNECE, I understand. But what is ITU's particular uh, you know, value add in this uh, arena? Well, ITU, of course, traditionally um, has been telecommunications. But a number of years ago, ITU's remit added all ICT. And ITU is the UN agency for ICT. And as that cooperatively supports the World Forum for Harmonization of Vehicle Regulations, of providing the I ICT impacts into that. And now we've started work on actually looking at what these communications pieces will be between vehicles. Um, and uh, that is a, a, a UNECE World Forum activity with um, secretariat being provided by me on behalf of ITU as we're just literally starting that exploration that will lead to points again step by step of making roads safer for people by being able to have the automated driving pieces in parallel We've been working on, of course, there's artificial intelligence in this, and 
Um, ITU has been providing a lot of leadership in artificial intelligence, has done a uh, focus group um, on automated artificial intelligence for automated driving. And we're learning how to do this. And I want to be very clear, we're not putting artificial intelligence live in vehicles. We're not going to have vehicles think they can learn or what have you. What we're doing is we're using artificial intelligence to be able to create the algorithms. Those are being done in the labs, very, 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 very high power computers looking at millions and millions of different events, writing the software that will go in vehicles to actually do the automated driving. Once we've written the software using the artificial intelligence, then we take that frozen and put it in the vehicles, and then we do the, the, the human tests and human trials to make sure that it works right. So you don't have to worry about the vehicle is going to be thinking and deciding what to do. What we're using, and the important part, is for us to do the artificial, the um, automated driving, where we have to handle literally millions and millions of different unique conditions. Um, we can use artificial intelligence, deep learning as we call it, to be able to create the algorithms that then the engineers, and we still have thousands and thousands of automotive engineers working on this, um, to test them and validate and what have you. And ITU has been a, a great contributor and is, in fact, hosting meetings um, soon next month on the validation methods for um, automated testing and the functional requirements for automated vehicles. Those meetings will be held here at, with ITU being the host as we're working through how to put all these pieces together. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Russ. Okay. Now, thank you very much. Cheers. I really appreciate it.